Thank you so much for the introduction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do two very special things in the remaining time that we have together. First of all, we're going to start off with a dynamic, robust, and engaging panel discussion. My panelists are standing by and eager to engage you. And then we're going to celebrate and we're going to shine the line and amplify some of the women agripreneurs that are in the room here today, many of them who have been doing stellar work, sleeves rolled up, and really deserve the recognition that they're going to get today. But first to the panel discussion. Um, we heard um, our First Lady reminding us once again that this is the African Union Year of Nutrition. And the challenge to African governments and partners is how do we put nutrition at the center of all recovery actions, not only for COVID-19, but also as we seek to ensure that we are transforming food systems. And so this panel discussion is about shining the light on the best practices and asking the question, how do we scale these? It's about going back to traditional food systems and asking ourselves, how do we leverage these traditional food systems in the context of climate change? And of course, we are here to also ask the question, what are the structural market factors that are making a access to affordable nutrition out of reach for many Africans today, and how do we begin to change that picture? So joining me on stage, please help me welcome Honorable Dr. Idefonse Musafiri, the Minister of State of Agriculture in Rwanda. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Your Excellency, any seat on the, on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Excellency Gerda Verberg, coordinator of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement. She's coming up, let's give her a round of applause. We're joined by Professor Ruth Onyango, founder and director of Rural Outreach Africa. Welcome, Professor. Dr. Gunhil Stodalen, founder and executive chair of the EAT Forum and founder of the Food Forward Consortium. Thank you very much. Dr. Gunhil, thank you very much. And we're rounding it off with Madame Kumba So, the FAO country director for Rwanda. Let's give her a round of applause, please. As Ms. So takes her place, and Ms. So, I'm actually going to start off with you because I believe that um, with the vantage point of being at the FAO, you have a bird's eye, eye view over some of the global best practices that we can begin to shine a light on. The question to you is, given the global situation, the impact on food security, and what that means for access to healthy diets. What are some of the best practices that you've seen as a response? And how do we then begin to think about how we bring this closer to home? Thank you so much. Allow me first to uh, say good morning to the excellencies in the room, starting from First Lady Janet Kagame that we have the pleasure to have today, the excellencies, uh, First Ladies in the room and virtually connected. Um, but also uh, Prime Minister de Saleng, uh, President uh, uh, of AGRA. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, you know, I've been hearing the numbers this morning, and it's true that when you talk of food security and numbers, it's always very dark. But I would like to get back to a few years back. MDGs, it was in 2015. Um, by 2014, we had already 72 countries in the world that achieved the MDG 1C, which is the target of halving the undernourished people in the world. Yeah. Many of those countries were in Africa. Even other countries, they achieved the most difficult goal of the World Food Summit, which was to reduce by uh, two the absolute number of food insecure people. What does it mean? It's possible. Yeah. The message that President um, uh, of AGRA, uh, Agnes, mentioned yesterday, it's true that the numbers are rising. We're talking of more than 800 million people today that are food insecure. It's due to COVID, it's due to conflict, it's due to many reasons, and women and children are the ones that are taking the burden of this food insecurity. However, there are solutions. If I look at Rwanda, I will not go very far away. I arrived in Rwanda only a month ago when I took function. The first thing that I saw is that policies are there and they are right. When we talk of food insecurity, healthy diet, policies are there. Actions are there. Investments are also coming in. 
Uh, one very interesting uh, program that I've seen that the government is already starting to scale up, which started as a pilot, is the school feeding programs. Right. Homegrown school feeding programs using local, locally produced food to make sure that children... They get. This is very important, and let me tell you why. Uh, in March 2020, figures were saying that in 160 countries, one school children... Uh, one in two school children had school meal program. During COVID-19, all this went, you know, fade away. So yeah. it's very important that it is coming back today, and government is really taking it very seriously, adopting it at global, le at, lo uh, at national level, and including it mm. in its no own budget. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. So, so school feeding programs work. Um, is what I'm hearing you saying. And of course, we did see some disruptions during COVID. In fact, in other parts of the continent, including my own country South in South Africa, we needed civil society organizations to go to court to make sure that school feeding programs were reinitiated. And so you're saying they work where there's good policy, action and investments follow. Okay, so let's build on that. Professor, um, Professor Oniyango, let me come to you because you're sitting at the sweet spot where you are working in academia, you're working in policy, you're working with communities. The question to you is, how do we go about anchoring nutrition at the center of sustainable food systems? Is there a clear pathway in terms of how do we get that right? Uh, thank you so much, and let me just thank everyone, and especially my baby sister, Agnes, for bringing the Food System Summit to Rwanda and for putting nutrition at the center of what we do. Yes. I, I have worked on nutrition since childhood. Yeah. I gave up doing medicine to do food when I learned that food is the medicine. Sure. So really, uh, for me, uh, even if I left this world now, I would say my mission has been fulfilled because we are talking of nutrition. We can't talk of food and we can't talk of anything else without including nutrition. For me, food is good food. Mm. It's safe food. It is who we are. Yeah. As we sit here eating these foods in big hotels, great food. If you ask anybody here, what are they missing? is the food they grew up eating mm. and what they eat at home. So really defines who we are. And I'm glad that we are at this level right now. So in terms of policy, yes, I've been a policy maker. I've helped to make policies, yeah. but policies don't translate into anything. Policies, it's just talk, it's rhetoric. I heard the mayor of uh, and Tebe yesterday says, saying, can we talk less and do more? Yeah. So I'm hoping as we live here, all of us are going to say, what are we going to do when we go back? Mm. Secondly, Africa is the continent number one, naturally. How can we be hungry? After mm. Corona, imagine, I've survived the two Corona episodes. We should be talking of sending food to Ukraine yeah. instead of crying that we are hungry because of the war. Yeah. This is not acceptable for Africa. And I can tell you as an old mama, grandmother of Africa, that we cannot continue to sit here after we have survived corona and we are begging for food yeah. and in dignifying ourselves instead of saying we shall feed ourselves and feed everyone else. Right? Mm -hmm. And finally, we need to act at the local level. Yeah. We need to act locally. Personally, I'm back to children. Primary school children. It makes it, it, it happens there. And I'm happy to see the uh, former first lady of Ethiopia. We've been through Ethiopia with Sasakawa Africa Association. We work there, and I see a lot of changes at the ground level. And what Her Excellency Janet Kagame has said, they are doing a lot in Rwanda. I'm from Kenya, by the way. But I love Rwanda better. Because, yeah, I'll admit, I'm an African. Yeah. I go to every African country, and I see what is good there, and I feel proud 
to be African, and we can do it. Let us be proud, mm. but we need resources. I've seen young people very encouraged. I've yeah. listened to young people here, women and men. They are so encouraged, you know? Uh, take the continent. We should be ashamed to see an African child malnourished with kwashoko, emaciated, and I, it makes me cry. Professor, thank, thank you. you. Professor, yeah. thank you so much. I think she deserves a round of applause for sure. The, the question is resounding. How can we be hungry? How can we be hungry? Given all that we know about the abundance and the richness of the continent, how can we be hungry? But you've said to us, let's talk more action. You've said to us, more leadership. You've said to us, focusing on the local. But you've also said to us, the money has to follow. Mm. Are we really thinking about resourcing and investments correctly? So, Madam Gerda, let me come to you next. And I want to tap into the Sun Movement, which we know is catalyzing learning across continents and across a number of countries. What are you seeing as coming to the surface in the form of best practice? Again, my question remains, how do we scale that in the context of Africa? Yeah, it's not. Um, um, first of all, I would like to uh, say that um, the food is uh, good. It's good to be in Rwanda, and I should give my two minutes to the professor <laughs> because she is from here and she uh, is living uh, uh, everything she is uh, telling us. But I very much like this um, this session because uh, first lady and for, for uh, and former first ladies are uh, talking straight from the heart. Leaders should do so and political leaders should act like this. So as um, the former lady of, uh, of Ethiopia said, it's not only that women are responsible for uh, nutrition. Mm. No, leadership should be held mm. accountable, Polit politicians should be held accountable for acting and working on nutrition and not only uh, lip service. I couldn't agree more with my uh, neighbor on this, including through investment. And don't tell me that nutrition is too complicated because that is what we hear uh, as well. There are many people like the professor here who are really happy to work with um, legislators, etc., to bring it into legislation and policy and also to help uh, to do the budgeting. So uh, no excuses uh, anymore. This is not a matter of only female leaders. This is something that political leaders should be held to account, not only at country and, and, and uh, African level, but also at local and district level. So for Rwanda, I would say elect your next mayors uh, on a campaign on how they will invest in their people, starting with children, mm -hmm. uh, in nutrition. Because nutrition is the cornerstone for all sustainable development goals. And Her Excellency uh, Jeanette Kagame has already uh, said it, it is creating health, peace, stability, uh, progress, prosperity, but also uh, development for the whole country. So uh, it, would be, it would be a crime against uh, humanity mm. if it's not happening right now, on, from now on, because everything is ready. The food systems are there, all the studies are, uh, are done, so it's now a matter of acting and being held to account. So I have a few uh, suggestions uh, here and a question uh, request to Her Excellency Madame uh, Kagan. Madame, you have a uh, foundation. And as Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, that's, the, uh, that's where SUN stands for, your country, your beautiful country, is a member already from the beginning. But your foundation can uh, uh, encourage the people working on nutrition and collaboration on nutrition a lot. May I suggest that your uh, foundation, the Imbuto Foundation, is reaching out to the civil society in uh, Rwanda to work with them on nutrition and prioritizing youth and working with chefs. Because you were mentioning the healthy diets, but it's very regrettable that these healthy diets and indigenous uh, crops and very nutritious crops are now labeled as poor people's food. Yeah. So there is a new branding uh, that is needed, and you as First Lady and Commissioner of the African uh, Union, thank you so much. You can be a champion for rebranding and bringing to the surface the important indigenous and two 
too often forgotten uh, yeah. crops that can uh, provide a healthy uh, diet. So these are the things that I would like to say. And I first, uh, I would like to make one additional suggestion, which is the following. I love the title, Increasing Access to Healthy Diet in the Year of Nutrition. But I would like to make one amendment. Yes, go Please for it. replace in, um, into, from, and onwards. Lovely. From the uh, African uh, Year of Nutrition and, and onwards. onwards. Because that is the only way to get nutrition, not only onwards, but also upward. upward. Excellent, Geta. Thank you very, very much. So. We are editing, we're editing in the flow, but editing with meaning. And I, I don't want to lose what you've said. You've said that nutrition is all of our problems. And, and as we sit here today, men and women, everybody's got their own stomach. So we have to make sure that it's all of our responsibility to bring about the change. You've spoken about accountability. What I've heard you say is the question we should be asking our mayors before we elect them is, what is your plan when it comes to nutrition? What is your plan for children? But, and also, more, but also the vice mayors, eh? because they are. Advise them as well. A, they have a high uh, responsibility in social development, including nutrition in the districts. Fabulous. And a beautiful tie up to the point from Professor as you talk, you call for rebranding. Professor reminded us that oftentimes the thing we miss the most, the thing is that's most nostalgic, is the food you grew up eating. So, how do we go back to those traditional food systems and rebrand them in the way that allows us to access them now? Honorable, Honorable Musafiri, let me come to you. Whenever we see an effective intervention, it oftentimes has two things. It's multisectoral and it's multi-stakeholder. If we were to lift those two things up, how could we use them to scale up nutrition in Africa? And to what extent might that also assist us in overcoming some of the structural market barriers that keep people away from accessing nutritious food? Thank you, Chabara. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, Excellency, first of the public of Rwanda, uh, the gentlemen, let me thank all of you for this uh, incredible seat that I'm having here. Uh, when they display that, I will be featuring the panel of first ladies. Everybody will think it's a mistake, but uh, as you can see, it's not a mistake. Uh, this is Rwanda, so uh, I'm happy for, for this seat. And uh, as, as, as agriculture, um, the Minister of Agriculture is concerned, we are normally in charge of making food available. Yeah. And uh, because you're in charge of food as a kid, and then we make sure that the, the food is properly used. So we are in charge of this too. Uh, if you ask me how we can, uh, we can do that, some good examples or some good uh, practice we, we, are, we are implementing in Rwanda. And everything we do is, with, is within a much secular approach uh, and uh, between government and agencies, ministries and international organizations <coughs> and partners. Uh, but if you tell me to give you some practice, some simple examples uh, or uh, practices we are using, I can only uh, repeat what uh, High Excellency, the First Head of the Republic of Rwanda has said. Uh, that's why I'm painting in Rwanda, and of course, if, if Africa can follow also, uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are welcome to, to, to replicate some of them. But let me just mention some uh, if, that we do uh, as Rwanda to make sure that we make food available and accessible and, and, and well used. So if we talk about, we start by production. If we, imp we implement the crop intention program, if we make sure that we increase productivity, that's in the line to make the food available. That's where we start. That's number one. And number two, if, if we harvest, make sure that we don't lose everything. Mm. So nutrition will happen if we make sure that we use everything we produce. That's where also the government is, is investing in post-harvest handling, bringing more cold chains, trans transportation systems, reducing aflatoxin, to make sure that at least in the fresh produce, what we produce, they get on, on, on the fork or on the plate yeah. without losing the, the content. So that's, it's, it's in the part of what we implement, and it's very important. Three, we have, and first of all, it, we have one cow per family. So we, in this kind of diversifying what we are supposed to bring to our citizens, so the president of Rwanda has also initiated one cow per family. Mm. Make sure that people have access to milk. Mm. It's not about food, it's about what they drink, so they, they, to diversify this uh, nutrient, to tackle my nutrition. So, so far, the government has provided more than 300,000 cows. Sure. And, and we're now, I think the, the, the fruits, the, the results are, are coming. 
So this is a bit practice. Maybe that can be also uh, mm -hmm. for the across Africa. So we, over the past 10 years, we have initiated the kitchen gardens. Make sure that the families, each family has a kitchen garden. So at least we have fresh vegetables around the home yeah. and to diversify uh, what we eat uh, in, in our homes. In, in, in the midst of agriculture, in the, today in this country, we are, in, we are also trying something new. We are, we are piloting the food composition table, okay. where we are trying to say, let, let's see, what, what is the content of what you eat? What is the scientific content of what we eat? So that all one has get informed. This is, if we, this, this is what we get. These are the, the nutrient, that are, these are fat, these are the, uh, the lipid that are there, so that to make sure you eat what you know. Yeah. And we have been conducting even the, the nutrition campaign. So, we realize it's not only about what you have. We realize even some uh, rich districts that produce more, that are more fertile. We realize maybe they have a lot of uh, number of uh, stunting. Yeah. And yet they are more productive, more fertile. So we need to conduct uh, nutrition campaigns. And we have been even do doing milk campaigns, milk drinking campaigns with the other partners. Uh, we partnered with the other, like WFP, uh, FAO, to conduct this. Uh, uh, school feeding programs Got with you. other ministries. Also with chefs? Yes, also of course. With so young of course people. With the chefs and, and yeah, of course, this is very important. And, and this is to make sure that then the most important thing, as I want to mention, is what, uh, also Fesed uh, said, on early childhood development program, where we yeah. start with the lives of mothers when mm. they are still pregnant. And we think about the mothers and children. Yeah. And when they are born, they go into early childhood development program. And on, the, on this, I want to take my single honor to really appreciate the work done by Her Excellency, the first of the, the, the public of Rwanda, who I consider personally as the mother of mm. these early childhood development centers. And, and then they're doing a very great job. And it, it is really um, reducing the impact of the stunting very Drastically, so it's very something to, to applaud at this particular time. And I um, hope I hope you will continue to champion breastfeeding because Rwanda is one of the countries in the world who has the highest level of breastfeeding, but then more investment in the nutrition of young women and lactating mothers is, I think this so, is, yeah, this so, is so honorable. I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. Um, I know that you probably want to respond to that, but let's also get you 10 more seconds because we've also got chefs in the room um, and, and, and we're keen to hear from them. Mm. They're going to react to a little bit of what they've heard on stage. So, so let me take my 10 seconds. But this one is very, no way not. Yes. And also consider. Now, the most important the last one, thing I want to mention, that I think why we're doing, maybe that Africa should follow. Yeah. Gender equality promotion. Got you. And if we do gender equality promotion in Rwanda, we know what we do by bringing this inclusiveness. Youth, women, we know what we do because it's first of all recognizing that this role of women in preparing this uh, nutritious food. Yeah. A second is to eliminate these gender stereotypes where people say uh, the meat is all for men, eggs are for men, and other things. So they have to understand that. Everybody has access to resources, to the finances, is to bring access mm. to resources by women who are mostly involved in the preparation, in yeah. the purchase of this, uh, this, this nutritious food. And then from there, gender equality should be at the forefront yeah. of having this healthy diet for, for Rwandans, even for Africans if they want. This is the only way we can overcome. Thank you. Honorable Musafiri, thank you so much. I, I think he definitely deserves a round of applause. Um, you've, you've listed so many initiatives and so many entry points to really at, uh, tackle this issue of not having access to, to nutritious food. And what it raises as a question is, certainly there is work being done. The question then becomes, how do we scale? Where there are pockets of excellence, how do we really scale? And that's the question we want to be vexed with as we leave here today. So let me wrap up the panel by going to Dr. Gunhild. And Dr. Gunhild, I, I, I really want you to give you the opportunity maybe to reflect on what you've heard from the other speakers and your comment really to be, first and foremost, back to Professor's call to action. What do we do? I don't want to get off the stage with us having just spoken. I want us to get to action. What do you do from a policy perspective? What is your recommendation about what needs to be done from here? And is there anything that is critical that we have not touched on that you just want to bring to the surface? Thank you so much. And two things. But first, I would just say that it's fantastic to be in beautiful Rwanda and 
at the African Food Forum uh, and talking about food as a system, not in bits and pieces, but really how do we achieve healthy, uh, affordable diets to everybody everywhere from sustainable, resilient food systems. And that's very much thanks to you, uh, Agnes Kalibata, for your leadership with the UN Food System Summit. And when it comes to what to do, we have heard many uh, uh, important interventions and suggestions here in the panel, but I think the most important right now, and which no government has yet done, Rwanda might be the very first, that is to actually now build on the fantastic work that was done during the UN Food System Summit, the national pathways that are great, but they are words on a paper. So now my m number one recommendation would be to get this anchored as the highest uh, level in government. We need first, first ladies, but also first men. Uh, and this is not a nice to have. Access to healthy uh, diets from sustainable food systems is actually a matter of national security, and yeah. it has to be owned by the whole government. So now the next step would be then to devel uh, develop a cross-sectoral, uh, multi-partner um, multi uh, action plan uh, that really reflects the true value, true cost of food across the whole of government and then start mm. to implement. That would be uh, the number one. What has not been uh, mentioned, Gerda, you were touching up on investment and I think you said it too, but we need to start talking about shifting food finance. Yeah. Bob Dylan famously sung uh, way back that money doesn't talk, money swears. And if we look into how money is flowing into food, uh, food systems today, it's exactly that. And we need to now start to align food finance and financial instruments with health of people and health of the planet. And there is a very interesting initiative, uh, the Good Food Finance Network set up with Gita City and the World Bank and other partners, really trying to address shifting food finance and also making access to finance for those wanting to transform food systems available. And the last thing I would uh, put as an, a question really, uh, we cannot talk about not being poor if you cannot access healthy diets. Mm -hmm. And we now know that although the international poverty line is $1.9 per capita a day, we know that the cost of healthy diets is $4 a day. Mm -hmm. So we need to start talking about lifting that international poverty line. So I think the most important thing we can uh, agree on is in this uh, forum is that really the next step now need to be the action plans that must be in implemented mm -hmm. and obviously working across sectors and having this owned and prioritized by the highest level uh, in governments. Madam Moderator, Nosy, yes. there is one thing before we close because I know time is running. Yeah. Time but, is gone, but let's hear you. But listen, um, it's also smart for a government, and since we have a Minister of State uh, here and the uh, First Lady, to look into different envelopes and combine them. There is a national determined contribution for COP, where there is a lot of money behind. There is the universal health coverage. And next to the, to the funding, let money uh, speak, it's also smart to combine agenda mm. and create win-wins for both mm. the people and, uh, and the planet. Okay, fabulous, very Ten last seconds. word. Yes, go for it. So exactly to that, Gerda, because we can really create a system uh, from today where we have many losers yeah. from the current failing food systems to a system that creates multiple win-wins. Yeah. Yeah. And if governments start to align everything from agricultural subsidies to public procurement, taxes and incentives and food-based dietary guidelines, we can really improve the health of people and planet with decent livelihoods for farmers. Okay, so before, before we give you all a round of applause, I just want to not miss the actions that you've brought to the surface. We need to build on the work coming out of the Food Systems Summit, so we, because that's the only way we make sure that that doesn't become another talk shop. Then we need to make sure that we're integrating that into our national pathways, 
we're saying food nutrition and access to nutritious food is a national security issue. So it's about lifting it up on the agenda. You've spoken about cross-sectional, multi-sectoral, whole of government approaches. I think it's been a theme that also, Minister, you touched on as well. We need to shift food finance and some of the comments have been about that. How do we consolidate budgets so that they're win-win situations? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got two incredible chefs in the audience who are going to react to some of what we've heard here um, on the stage. But before they do, can we please just give my panelists a round of applause? What an excellent conversation. And this, and this is what happens when you have action oriented mindsets really leaning into the conversation. I'm gonna ask you to stay and let's, let's lend an ear to the chefs as we stay uh, on stage together. I'm gonna invite uh, Chef uh, Aliandra Schrader to please, uh, I believe you might have a microphone making its way to you now. And um, as she takes to the floor, allow me just to quickly raise the fact that she's an award-winning author, a plant-based nutrition chef, a food TV person, and an activist based in Los Angeles. Chef, we're keen to hear from you. What's your message for us today? Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to react to this wonderful panel and all the great interventions that we've heard today. So as a, as a chef, as a steward of the planet, as a champion of the SDG, but most importantly, as a lactating mother of an infant, I heard so many important messages here today. The first one is that we need to act. And I want to remind everyone, whether you're a policy maker, a politician, a business person, there's not such thing as a small action. And as I call for all of us to take our responsibility to act and make these food systems better for everyone and good food available to all, I want to recognize the presence of uh, young Rwandan chef students that are here today. I am a big proponent, proponent of beaner, become a beaner, I am a beaner, beans are the future. And lastly, uh, going back to the basics, I love what was said, that the memories that appeal to our senses are the foods of our ancestors and our, um, our older family members. Like, let's go back to the bases, and yeah. that way we can help promote um, uh, better food systems. Uh, it's great that the science already says that the same food that promotes great human health is the best food for our Mother Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Schrader, let's give her a round of applause, please. And we're going to hear now from uh, Chef Christian Abigan uh, as he takes to the, to the microphone. Um, allow me to introduce him briefly. He's a pioneer of new African cuisine, a chef advocate, an expert in gastronomy and food security is um, issues, amongst many other hats. Chef, over to you. Just hello to everybody. We just always just, I want you to to talk about the taste. Yeah. Because we, we, we can talk about food programs, about products, if we are not talking about the taste and what we are going to use, the recipes. The main thing is to have the taste. Because when you go, when you give the food to a child, the same beans, if you don't have the real good taste, the different taste, because you have to, to educate the palate of the kids. Yes. This is very important, like in the school, in the canteen in the school, diversifying the food is the most, I think, always important thing that we have to do, mm. all of us, to think about the taste. This is what I want only to say. Chef, thank you very much. The taste of the food and how do we diversify the palate so that it is embracing of that taste. Ladies and madam, gentlemen. Madam, madam moderator, before you close down. I, I don't like think we're going to make... end the panel, no, but yes, let's give yes, that yes, yes, one no, more no, chance. No, 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 no. Because your summary was brilliant and yeah. you did a brilliant job as moderator and thank you for that. But I would like to make one amendment. I think we should rename the National Food Systems Pathways into National Food Systems Pathways Action and Implementation because that is what is needed. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't close it on a better note. Let's give our panelists a big round of applause. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for your time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can we also give our chefs a big round of applause? Thank you very much.